Hello, everybody, and welcome to Atlassian's first ever work-life event. Thank you so much for being here, and I hope you've had an insightful afternoon so far. I'm Annie Dean. I'm Atlassian's head of Team Anywhere, and you have probably been hearing the phrase Team Anywhere a little bit today. So let me give you some context to what that means and where we are on our journey. So let me set the scene. Uh, like many of you, in the beginning of the pandemic, when it hit, we had to make some tough calls. We closed our offices and we needed to send our staff to go work from home. But very quickly, um, and faster than many of other companies that are our peers, we recognized that distributed work and this new future that we were living in presented a very big opportunity for us as a business and for the business value that we create for our customers. And so our founders, Scott and Mike, made the tough call to make Team Anywhere or distributed work a permanent state of affairs at Atlassian. And the concept of Team Anywhere was born. So what is Team Anywhere? Well, Team Anywhere is our multi-year objective to evolve Atlassian into the best distributed company in the world. And that means that my role as head of Team Anywhere is focused on solving our biggest pain points as a company and also seizing our biggest opportunities in a distributed work environment. And our thinking here is really that if we can get out ahead of the problems and solve these problems for ourselves, we'll be able to create real value for our customers. So what is Team Anywhere? I think it's really helpful to center on what problems we're trying to solve. So we have three goals that we're moving towards. The first is talent everywhere. Our goal is to acquire talent from new places and new backgrounds. We've increased the number of locations where Atlassians can live and work. And that enables us to seek amazing talent from diverse backgrounds that are unbounded by the physical footprint of our offices that we operate. Atlassians are now located in and hired from many, many more places than we would have been able to reach prior to the pandemic. Our next goal is that we want to be able to embrace the opportunity to work flexibly by offering uh, the opportunity for Atlassians to design a thriving life alongside a thriving career. And we do that by offering new forms of flexibility and in choice, and to ensure that the experience of working for Atlassian is epic, no matter where each Atlassian decides to work each day. And finally, our goal is to reimagine teamwork. We have been building teamwork software for 20 years, and we are ruthlessly dedicated to learning which practices and which technologies best empower distributed teams. Our goal is to reinvest those learnings through into our business through product innovation. And we've made some significant progress on these goals. Um, one thing I'm happy to report is that Atlassian is much more distributed than it was prior to the pandemic. So if you look at our office footprint back in 2019, you can see that our employees are located basically where our offices were. But as we move to 2020, when Team Anywhere really got off the ground, Atlassians moved to new cities and even outside of the country at a surprising rate. Um, and we saw new communities organically begin to form in different areas of the globe. Um, we saw communities develop around Melbourne, Australia, Boise, Ohio, Ohio <laughs> Boise, Idaho, uh, and Denver. We also had nomads who took advantage of some really unique opportunities for flexibility that we offer at Atlassian. So here at Atlassian, every employee has the opportunity to embrace short-term work from anywhere. That means that they can visit many places across the globe for up to 90 days per year. This inspired employees to spend time in amazing places like Mexico, Finland, and Hawaii, and to bring the inspiration that they took from those places back to their everyday working experience at Atlassian. Today, our employees live all across the globe. Team Anywhere gives our employees the opportunity to design a work life that really works for them. 
They can live near their family. They can visit their loved ones throughout the year. They can design a working experience that reflects their personal circumstances, whether they are caregivers to young children or aging parents or are somebody who has a disability. Today, we have 8,000 employees, over 8,000 employees, and more than 25% of our employees in the first year of Team Anywhere relocated to live more than two hours from an office, while 50% of our new hires did the same thing. This number is now at almost 40% of the Atlassian population living more than two hours from an office. At Atlassian, we are running one of the biggest social experiments in the world. We have ambitions to grow from 8,000 to 25,000 employees as a fully distributed, but still connected and effective workforce. Now, don't get me wrong. We don't have all of the answers, and that's why we're calling this an experiment. Um, but we are committed to learning every step of the way and to sharing those learnings with teams like yours. Now, the whole theme of this conference is how we can work differently together. And doing anything differently is really hard, but it's a profound opportunity to discover new ways of doing things. It's been two years since we made the shift to Distributed First, and I thought it would be helpful if I could share some of the key lessons that we've learned and the tactics that we're using to navigate this new environment. First, I wanna tell you what's keeping me up at night. So originally, you know, I talked to you about the goals that we're building for. Now let's focus on the problems that we need to be obsessed with solving. In order to make distributed work, we need to make sure that we are fostering and maintaining deep connections across the company. We need to increase effectiveness and the confidence of our distributed teams. And we need to enable global expansion. So let's start with connection. We believe that connection is the foundation of any functioning distributed environment. And we also believe that it's an important day-to-day -day experience for every employee at the company. So we have a few strategies that we use to drive connection across our company today. And one of those key strategies is gathering. So shared experiences are as important as ever in a distributed world. But I know that you know that it takes a little bit more planning and intention to pull those gatherings off in today's environment. So we call our approach to this intentional togetherness. Intentional togetherness means that when we gather together, whether it's virtually or in person, whether it's a large scale event or a small one, whether it is with our direct teammates that we work with every day or with our work neighbors and friends, we deliberately foster connection and culture. So our teams waited for two years to come together and I bet that many of you are the same. Uh, but in August, we reopened international travel and domestic travel, and we invited employees to plan intentional togetherness gatherings with their teams. In the past 30 days, over 25% of Atlassians have joined or planned an intentional togetherness gathering. That's a lot of people to coordinate, and it's a huge investment on behalf of our company and on the employees who are participating. So, we've committed to helping our teams in two key ways. One, we make it easy to plan events. So our workplace experience team coordinates planning logistics like choosing a location, activities, meals, and workshops. And by having a center of excellence focused on these logistics, we can automate as much of, as possible over time. This allows the teams who are attending to focus solely on the creative and social aspects of gathering. And one of the things that's really interesting here is that our workplace experience team previously defined workplace as the office, um, but now we've been able to expand the focus of that team to consider workplaces that are beyond the office, into virtual spaces um, and into offsite locations. The next thing that we do is we provide a framework for employees to use to make their event eventful, uh, intentional, and impactful. So we wanted to improve the error rate. We wanted to make sure that when employees invest in these moments of gatherings, that they truly would be intentional. Um, and so this framework helps employees define a purpose for their event, uh, choose the group size and location, make sure that every event has an active host, 
and consider things like format. You know, should this be an event that's virtual? Should this be a, an event that might be better in person? Um, and this really helps standardize what good looks like for these types of gatherings. But one insight that we've had is that connection isn't just important for the teammates that we're working with day to day. We have to make sure that every Atlassian has a group of work friends that they can turn to um, and spend time with and, and feel connected to the company with. And one of the things that's challenging is that as people move to new locations and away from our offices, and remember I just uh, shared that quote with you that up to 40% of our employee population is now living more than two hours away from an office, um, it can be harder for people to find an opportunity to meet face to face with other Atlassians that they might know. At the same time, we're also experiencing organic communities popping up. Um, and we're seeing that happen all over the US. We're seeing that happen in key cities in Australia and also in India and other places that we operate. So we created a program to bring Atlassians together regionally. Um, we give Atlassians funding to self-organize events so that they can meet with work friends who are also their neighbors. Um, and in this past month, we have hosted more than 50 events bringing together over 300 Atlassians uh, to do things like go bowling or go on a hike or volunteer. But we don't, if you could bring me back a slide, clicker issues. Um, we don't have all the answers today. And like I mentioned, this is a pretty high scale program, right? 25% of Atlassians using it in one month on a team by team basis. So it's pretty decentralized in terms of its impact and our visibility into everybody's experience. And so we needed to build learning right into the process. So the way that employees can request and coordinate intentional together, togetherness events is through JIRA service management. They get assigned a ticket, it's linked to their cost codes. We, it helps us understand um, you know, how much gets spent on every event and it also automatically triggers a post-event survey so that we can hear directly from Atlassians quantitatively and qualitatively how that event went and helps us make decisions to change and adapt that program over time. So we're talking about connection and strategies that we're using to drive connection. And it goes without saying that another way that we use, um, another strategy that we use to drive connection is through our offices. In our new model, Atlassians can choose whether and if and when they'll attend an office at all. There's no obligation for an Atlassian to attend an office or visit an office at any time. And this means that when Atlassians do visit the office, it's because they truly want to be there, not because of a sense of obligation or expectation. But what we're learning is that many employees actually still do want to go into an office. And we're actually noticing that our population um, has differences based on regions. So for instance, we're seeing that our Australian population really likes to go into the office and our office attendance is pretty high. Whereas in the US and other parts of the globe, it's more varied. Um, so I think it's really important that as we design these programs, we remember that it can be community specific how we deal with these programs and activate these strategies. So our offices remain a cornerstone element of promoting our culture. And we're continuing to invest in our physical footprint in meaningful ways. Um, one of the uh, projects that we just launched is a new office in Austin, Texas. This is our first Team Anywhere office, and we designed it predominantly through the pandemic, and we incorporated the lessons that we learned in the pandemic into its office design. Some of the things that you'll notice in the images that you see on the screen is that this is an office that's moved from the productivity model of the past into the experiential office of the future. It is deeply focused on connection and collaboration, and in its six floors of uh, real estate space or square footage, there are just 77 individual desks. And yet there's infinitely configurable spaces for employees to um, connect, collaborate, work together, work with virtual collaborators. Um, and there are even unique new uh, ways of collaborating like Zoom rooms that recognize one face per frame. So when you're in a conference room, it's displayed in the Zoom screen as um, everybody having their own individual window. 
We also have unique uh, amenities like loom rooms. Um, loom rooms enable people to record looms in a beautiful setting and distribute asynchronous videos out to their teams. So if you are like us, you are probably obsessed with making sure that you're building high performing teams. And that's why we are deeply focused on effectiveness in a distributed world. I wanted to talk to you through some of the tactics that we've uncovered on our Team Anywhere journey that may help you too. First is that effectiveness is baked right into our team design. When forming a team, uh, we design by time zone. We cluster everyone within a time zone band so that team members can share a minimum of four hours of working time overlap with one another. This helps create a kind of automated collaboration infrastructure while also giving everyone individually a lot of choice in where they live. But there's been a lot of talk about how we innovate our work places in the context of distributed work. It's very focused on where each individual and team is working from. But actually, effectiveness in this environment really comes down to how we spend our time. In a distributed world, as teams move further from one another, synchronous time becomes more precious. And our goal at Atlassian is to spend our synchronous time in the right ways and to increase the amount and the quality of the work that we can do asynchronously. So there is one notorious place that teams waste time. Can you guess it? Meetings. How many of you are moderately traumatized from the amount of meetings that you've been in over the course of the pandemic? Yes, I see actual hands. Literally everybody is raising their hand. Um, and so I wanted to let you know that as an expert in this space, I am inviting you to cancel half of them. So as a rule of thumb, try not to spend more than half of your day or your week in meeting time. That allows you to spend about half of your day in thinking time, focus time, and also attending to asynchronous work. Don't forget that asynchronous work takes time. Um, communicating with people takes uh, time. So you know, the, the messages that pop up in the either and ask you to do things, those things add up and we have to remember and create capacity for that. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you which meetings to keep and then I'm gonna ask you to cancel the rest. Keep meetings that initiate. So these meetings build momentum for a project, they form a new initiative or team, and the format of these meetings might be short, repeated meetings over a number of days but the goal here is to drive attention or commitment to an issue. That's not always as effective in an asynchronous format where you're just trying to send a comment or ask someone to read a page or watch a video. Keep meetings that result or focus on ideation. This usually focuses on creative ideation, enabling teams to be creative together. And these meetings tend to be longer to allow teams to really settle into the creative process. It wouldn't be uncommon for a meeting that's focused on creative ideation to be 90 minutes or three hours or be a dedicated block of two days. But the way that you make sure that that's a good use of time is create a lot of structure around it so everyone can bring the right ideas to the table and get really creative to create innovative solutions. Keep meetings that converge. These meetings solve complex problems. They often require a lot of asynchronous prep in advance because when you enter a meeting focused on convergence, you really want everyone to be on the same page. You want everyone to have shared context and shared information. And finally, keep meetings that are focused on bonding. Bonding helps build strong relationships. It takes over 200 hours to build a close friendship. That is time worth investing. So why these four things? Initiating, ideating, converging, bonding. Well, these activities require the richest forms of communication. And so only synchronous formats will do. Asynchronous just isn't gonna get you in those four areas. But if your meetings are not focused on these activities, especially if they are about status updates, 
or conveying information, use async. So distributed work, really, it's the async revolution. And our tools make it possible to do your best work any place, any time. If you want to stay close to progress on a project, instead of bringing your team across time zones into a synchronous space for a status update, use a tool like Atlas to automate async updates from your teams. In a lot of ways, Atlas is like Twitter. You can create 280 character updates while linking out to other deeper reading and resources. At Atlassian, the celebrities are the projects, and we are all following along with their status. This can work for you whether you're a leader who's trying to understand cross-functional work or the work that's happening in your own organization, or if you are an individual contributor. Now, at Atlassian, and I know those of you who are in the audience who are Atlassians will agree, everything gets written down. Whether it is a policy or a project or a personal update, it all lives in confluence. At Atlassian, we have a big culture of documentation and we make recommendations and decisions directly in confluence pages so that it's easy for everyone to follow along. We use Trello to manage tasks in one of our most important company processes, new hire onboarding. It gives us an opportunity to write down our company history, mission, and values and embed it into a company, a customized Trello board for every new hire. Now, the last thing I'll say is that whether it's sync or async, at Atlassian, we're not just using our own tools. It's really about using all of the tools that we've got at our disposal um, to help teams make the best decisions the fastest. And you'll see that um, one of the things that I love using is Loom. Um, it's also something that our founders use. So every month they uh, share a founder video called The Download. It actually just hit our uh, email inboxes today, so I'll be watching it after this session. Um, and it's a great way for Atlassians to see our founders' faces, connect with the emotional landscape of what they have to share with us, and really tell us their story of what's happening at the company this month. This is something important that I use as I manage big announcements and strategies across the company. If I'm releasing a, a big company-wide announcement, I like to put a Loom video at the top of the page so that everyone at the company who's receiving my message can see the team behind the text. And that's a really important thing to communicate in this world, in this distributed world. Okay, last thing that we really want to focus on we've had to ask ourselves, how do we expand globally? This effort is called Team Anywhere, and that phrase absolutely respects our vision. But practically, it can mean team many more places over time. And what that means is that we have to be strategic and intentional about the places that we choose to grow and expand. And the way that we do that is by having a consistent expansion philosophy. So I'll share with you um, a couple of the things that we think about in choosing uh, how to expand into new global territories that might help you. The first is that we want to align with our company values. We want our values to prosper wherever we operate. The next is that we want to be sure that wherever we go has a strong available talent pool. We have to go where we can grow and we need to make sure that every new region aligns to our talent and business strategies. We need to focus on go-to-market opportunity. So we have to ask ourselves whether our presence in a new jurisdiction helps us acquire new customers or helps us provide new support for customers that might already be located there. And finally, we think about cost effectiveness. So we wonder, can we maintain a presence in this jurisdiction in a way that is cost effective and makes sense from an operational perspective? All right, so I know distributed work can be hard, but it is such an important lever for our business at Atlassian and also for the world. So here's how we see it. We believe that we can build a 100 year company by releasing ourselves from the constraints that have limited where and who we hire. We believe that we can create an infrastructure to allow employee choice and flexibility 
to be the best team and community members inside and outside the virtual walls of Atlassian. We realize that we don't have all of the answers and we're constantly reimagining and implementing new ways to invest in culture and collaboration so that we can support your teams too. It has been so much fun chatting with you today. Thank you for making the time, whether you're here at the Chase Center or you're joining us virtually. Um, and I hope that you learned something, but I wanted to quickly recap for you um, three key things that I want you to take away from this session. The first is that connection can be built in person or virtually, but it has to be intentionally designed. The second is that team effectiveness can flourish in a virtual world and a distributed world. And a big part of this is how you manage your synchronous and asynchronous time and what tools you use to get the job done. And finally, global expansion is possible with the help of a consistent expansion philosophy. We're only just getting started with Team Anywhere. Distributive work is no longer the future of work. It is truly the reality of now. Thank you all so much for joining me today and welcome to the modern age of work.